Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Cloud Solutions Academy. I am Naveen Balani. So in this week, we will continue our discussion on policy-driven CI-CD process. The following figure shows how to implement a policy-driven CI-CD process. So at a high level, all the application code, configuration files like Kubernetes manifest, security policy, definitions, and any customization templates are stored in a central Git source repository. The Git repository acts as a single source of truth that provides implicit built-in auditability for your application code and act as a basis to propagate changes and drive deployment, operations, governance, and observability across environments. So this concept of Git serving as an operating model to support software delivery lifecycle is referred to as GitOps. So at a high level, the process consists of the following. Usually you would break down the software application into a set of modules. Developers works on respective modules and checks in their code into a central Git source repository. Once the code is checked in, continuous integration tools like Jenkins or Cloud Build are configured to listen to any changes in the Git source repository. So once the changes are committed, so as part of your continuous integration script, you would first check out the code, run the test cases, build the container image, and store the image to a container registry, like a Docker registry or a Google Cloud container registry. Now once the container image is pushed to the container registry, the deployment configuration files needs to be updated with the container image URL that was pushed in the earlier step. The operator team also uses the Git repository to store all the configurations like Kubernetes manifest, security policy files, infrastructure code like Terraform scripts, and usually creates templates that provide some best practices that needs to be applied for deployment across environments. So these template files provide placeholders for injecting property values at runtime like replicas equal to 2 for development and replicas equal to 5 for a production instance. Various tools such as Customize or Helm can be used to create templates for your manifest without changing the original base manifest file. So all the templates and tools need to be integrated as part of your CI-CD process. Now once the template files are changed based on the deployment environment, the code is checked in and continuous delivery tools like Jenkins or Cloud Build picks up the changes from that branch and applies a configuration for deployment of containers to the respective container management environment like Google Kubernetes Engine or AWS EKS servers. Now as part of your CI CD process, you also need to ensure that you need to apply security policies or configuration across environments in a unified way. These policies are also stored in Git and you could use components like Antos Config Management or any equivalent product which can be used to enforce these policies to multiple environments. So these policies can be as simple as ensuring that all deployment have a namespace or ensuring a specific container is deployed to a specific region only. Now once the application is up and running, you can leverage tools like Service Mesh to gain more visibility into your services and benchmark its performance by defining service level objects in alignment with your application requirements. So this process briefly outlines the workflow required to execute policy driven CICAD process across environments. In our next week's episode, we will carry out a lab for demonstrating the above functionality. Hope you found the information useful and please do subscribe to the channel to receive regular updates. Thank you for watching.